Livelihoods Enhancement for West Nile and Choli, Lewa, is a grant action implemented by a consortium that consists of Dan Church Aid, Uganda Protestant Medical Bureau, Mukwano Group of Companies, led by the Lutheran World Federation, under the Development Initiative for Northern Uganda, DINU. DINU is a Government of Uganda program supported by the European Union and supervised by the Office of the Prime Minister. Lewa is proposed to cover the Acholi and West Nile sub-regions in the districts of Madiokolo, Arua, Maracha, Koboko, Obongi, Yumbe, Ajumani, Moyo, and Lomu. The Acholi and West Nile sub-regions bear the brunt of hosting over 750,000 refugees from neighboring South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo, putting added stress on scarce resources and infrastructure. The project is to cover three years with the aim of reaching 56,000 households, 60% being women and 40% men. Lewa is contributing to the DINU program overall goal, consolidate stability in northern Uganda, eradicate poverty and undernutrition, and strengthen the foundations for sustainable and inclusive social economic development. Acholi and West Nile sub-regions have above average poverty rates. 36 and 42 percent of households are income poor in Acholi and West Nile respectively. The project being spread across the two sub-regions of West Nile and Acholi, LWF is concentrating on the side towards Acholi uh, and it leads the consortium of the other partners. And then DCA also having been present much more on the Arua side of the consortium leads Mukwano and UPNB. So the two provide leadership, that means building capacity for, for the rest and, uh, and, and coordinating them. 80% of our community constitutes uh, agriculture because uh, there is no any other thing that we can do. Because uh, one, if the climate is, uh, is not actually well, uh, if there's, there's floods and if there's uh, droughts, at times, we, we really face problems in terms of production. Another one could be natural. Those are um, uh, insects which could attack the crops. And uh, sometimes, you know, they, they have seasons. You know, in other places there was grasshopper, but our story here was different. We have come together in a group to do our work because in our place here we have poverty. There is diseases which affect our crops. We don't have medicines, we don't have money to buy those medicines. We wanted uh, our member when they, although they are cultivating in different fields, we wanted to get a storage place. In, in one place, we wanted to build a store, but our capacity is not yet enough you can see our type of uh, storage. We still use granary, uh, as you see behind me here. We cannot really do farming as a business. And the market is also another challenge. When we plant and we harvest our crops like that, there is nobody who can act to buy our crops. We are particularly involved in uh, local agriculture within the oil seeds subsector. We are looking at import substitution uh, rather than sending our dollars away to the Far East to import palm oil. We started a program to start looking at local sourcing. We are looking at primarily sunflower and soya bean oil seeds. Farming needs finances to facilitate the management of the crop in the field. So in most cases, finances for the farmers to do farm operations is lacking. And with the high interest rates, farmers end up not going to get finances to do their farm operations. We also have had the issues with the farmers' access to improve the seeds. There's an issue of farmer institutional development. More farmers operate independently as opposed to groups. So they have not enjoyed those advantages of coming together to do uh, group farming and so on. In Obongi, we have a lot of farmer groups, but specifically the groups that we had engaged in the 
the oil seed value chain, especially the sunflower, we have uh, initially 47, but active as of now, there are only 21 groups. The farmer groups are not sustainable in the sense that different farm organizations come to these different farm, uh, farm these groups. As soon as that their project period expires, the groups end up and disintegrate. Another organization will also come and form different farmer groups. And uh, to add on to that, there is no cohesion for the farmer groups at the district level and at the national level. Those groups are engaged in the production of oil seed crops like soya bean, sunflower, and simsim. Sunflower is in fact the easiest crop because it takes shorter time, like three months they are ready. It is easy to manage and it can bring money at a shorter time. We provide for them uh, agricultural extension services, like uh, through trainings on how to grow the crops, on how to harvest, on how to, to manage the cropping system. Even for this uh, soya bean and sunflower, the farmers are to be trained on climate smart agriculture techniques so that they can increase their production and productivity in order to earn better. Today and for the foreseeable future, we do not have enough raw material coming into our factory in Lira. So the 72,000 farmers are definitely not enough. We need to increase our farmer base and more importantly, we need to improve their yields. So with one farmer, instead of getting 500 kilos per acre, we want to aim to get six to 700 kilos per acre. Then we also support communities and households in the proper nutrition for both children and mothers, maternal nutrition. Over 46% of children are moderately and severely stunted in West Nile and close to 37% in Acholi. When you look at uh, maternal and child health, there are these activities, services that we offer. Nutritional services. Of course, when mothers come for, for services, we check them for nutritional status. We even check the nutritional status for the babies. A lack of variety of foods grown, insufficient knowledge and information on nutrition, poor feeding habits of children, food insecurity due to levels of production, and a high disease burden contribute to malnutrition. We get the knowledge to train them to change the balanced diet, which food they eat to develop their body, and then another food for, for, for bringing them energy or, or the, the strength for, for doing their work. And then the VST also get the experience. They get an enough knowledge. But although they are doing all those things, but there are a lot of challenges they get. They distant from the VST home. All those distance, they, they cannot reach there early enough. Why am I saying this? There is no transport mean. There's high teenage pregnancy in the district. Uh, we are seeing that the high teenage pregnancy could be because of uh, uh, social events in the community. It could be because of lack of parenting. It could be because of lack of male involvement also during parenting. Then we have uh, late antenatal attendances. This late antenatal attendances, because mothers are supposed to attend antenatal services eight times during the nine months of pregnancy. Another challenge you have in the district here is uh, uh, inadequate supply of uh, the commodities to be used in the maternity or in MCH. Qualitative findings from VHTs further revealed that women ended up delivering from home due to long distances to the health facilities. This is in line with the findings in the annual health sector performance report where Acholi subregions had the highest maternal deaths at 73% and prenatal death at 22.1%. Overall, we shall be reaching 56,000 households 
Uh, and obviously these are farming households. They, they will benefit from this whole package of, of interventions touching on agricultural improvements, uh, commercialization of agriculture, improvement of nutrition, and access to family planning. Okay, today, Mukwano, over its 15 year history, we've developed quite a large farmer base in Uganda. And with this project, we are going into West Nile in a big way, and we're going to, we are cementing our, our interaction in the Acholi sub-region. We are hoping that if we can develop the uh, oil seed subsector substantially in Uganda, the farmer wins, the consumer wins, in between Mukwano and the other entities and stakeholders, they win, and overall Uganda wins.